Go. Well, praise the Lord. Dean Bai, International Director with Return Ministries, and I'm happy to be with all of you here today and those who might be listening in afterwards. Uh, some might recognize the wall before me, uh, the Western Wall, some call it the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall, the Kotel. Um, isn't it interesting? You ever thought of it? The Jews faithfully at this 24-7 prayer meeting are going day in and day out. Probably one of the most amazing uh, global prayer meetings going on is at this wall, okay, uh, at, 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 at a wall called a retaining wall that is, if this is the mountain, you know, I needed to put this uh, retaining wall on so it could actually hold a temple. Um, and uh, this is what was done uh, 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 around the time of um, Herod, uh, before uh, Yeshua would be walking as the Son of Man. Uh, in occupied Jerusalem, uh, occupied by the Romans. And yet today, this is all the Jewish people have, is they, they, they're not allowed on the temple. They used to, uh, but that got closed down, as some of you are aware, this past week. Uh, but here we're celebrating Jerusalem's 54th birthday, okay? And... Uh, They've been liberated. They've been reunited with Israel. This is a huge thing for Christians around the world. We celebrate that we are the disciples that are living in an hour when there is a liberated Jerusalem. And yet, at this liberated Jerusalem, Jews have to come to a wall like this. They can't even go up on top of its Temple Mount. I don't know about you, but something's not sounding like Jerusalem is yet that praise in all the earth. Yeah. Are you with me? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, any, anybody uh, picking up with me? Um, listen, I'm just going to put up a, a, a PowerPoint here. Yeah, there we go. So what, what I want to, what I want to focus on today, and I might go on a few rabbit trails, because join me, we've had quite a, a week happening here. Uh, and, you know, not only did we have Jerusalem celebrating its 43rd birthday, we've ended, you know, we're in our seventh week of praying 24-7 on the altar of prayer. Uh, we've got the escalation of what could potentially be a, a war in Israel with rockets firing uh many, many rockets and missiles, um, people dying, arcs very busy, boom, people from the south came up and uh, are moving in. Uh, it, it, it sounds wherever the ark has space right now, <laughs> we've got uh, uh, Jewish people, uh, Orthodox Jewish people, in fact, uh, families uh, coming and being sheltered by the Alley of the Turn Center. Praise the Lord. Um, but uh, I want to emphasize, God is calling the nations to get her home. Um, we also uh, 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 Jerry O'Leary, uh, loving God, blessing Israel, uh, fame. Uh, he was buried this past week. Uh, lots of stuff happening. Uh, but I got to say that... With all that's going on and swirling, does that mean we stop bringing Jewish people home? Uh, does that mean we don't respond any longer to the, what the Sovereign Lord says? See, I will beckon to the nations. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. They will bring their sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. And some would say, hmm, Dean, don't you know what's going on in Israel? <laughs> you can't even get there right now. Be between plague and missiles firing, uh, and airports closing. How do you get Jewish people home? You know, our attitude has to be, God, you want your people home? Uh, we're going to get at her uh, and uh, to get her home, and we're going to do it together with you, almighty God. Okay, somebody say praise the Lord. Uh, I'll tell you, 
we got to get at her to get her together home. Okay. And, and, and I, uh, I just really want to encourage us in this. And let me just give you uh, a little bit of background. First of all, as I said, Jerusalem had its 54th birthday. 1967, a miraculous six-day war happened. And uh, uh, Israel hadn't even anticipated or expected it. But before you know it, they took the Temple Mount. Somebody put an Israeli flag up on the Temple Mount. And uh, the uh, echelon of uh, Israel and Jerusalem of that day thought, uh-uh, that could start a third world war. They brought it down. And, uh, and so to this day, uh, they can't go up here. They got to go down here and celebrate whatever needs to be celebrated. And, and, and so that's what they do. And, and just take a look at this and just try to feel this moment. Oh, I bet you can't even hear that. Yeah, yeah. You know why? I know why. So let me let me get this to a point where you can feel it. Okay, where you can uh, see it. There we go. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Here we try again. Just pause for a second. Do you see that fire that's that's up on the Temple Mount? Apparently, uh, while this is happening down there, some of the Ramadan activities are happening on top because you see it's it's through the Jordan um, government that the Temple Mount is ruled today, and uh, they're celebrating Ramadan up on top there because they feast in the evenings and and um, uh, what's it called. Uh, fast through the day and of course some fireworks went off but there's more than just the fireworks on top of the temple mount uh, meanwhile missiles are flying into jerusalem out of gaza uh apparently so they say fireworks lit this tree that's right close to the western wall uh but in the midst of all this it's such a crazy picture We've got missiles flying into Israel. We've got unrest in Jerusalem. We've got uh, Israel celebrating Jerusalem's 54th birthday. Okay, it, 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 it's an awesome day, but it's also a terrible day. Uh, all happening at the same time. I just want you to catch this moment. You know, take a look at some. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta roll this thing back because this is just crazy. You know, look at some of the faces of. The, 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 these kids celebrating the fact that Jerusalem has been liberated. <laughs> Is it me? I, I would die. Somewhat. <laughs> You know, it's just craziness. Uh, craziness. You know, I, Isaiah 62 begins with, uh, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. <clears throat> I don't think that's the torch that Isaiah saw, okay? And But then I, I want to stop in just four words. The nations will see. That's verse 2 of Isaiah 62. The nations will see. Yeah. 
if there's anything you get from this morning's time together is acknowledge the fact that the nations will see. Because the truth of the matter is, the majority of the nations don't see. And that's our reality. Hey, hey, and I don't mean to be harsh, the majority of the Christian church on the planet doesn't see. We don't value an earthly Jerusalem, a city in which the king, the Messiah, the king of the Jews, the lion of the tribe of Judah, is returning to. And if we do, we must be pretty silent because we're not having an influence in our nations. The nations will see is what Isaiah 62 verse 2 says. Well, what are they going to see? Are, are they going to see the truth that uh, God has a plan for Jerusalem or just a heavenly Jerusalem? Will, 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 they, will they see this truth? Uh, what is Isaiah 62? Isaiah 62 says, um, the nations will see your righteousness. And all kings, your glory. You see, Jerusalem is, is supposed to reflect a righteousness and reflect a glory that all the nations are going to see. But how are they ever going to see it if the nations have a part in seeing that come about? Remember Isaiah 62.6. Most of us uh, we're, we're here because we are a praying people. We're uh, intercessors. We, we believe we are called watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem. And, and, and part of the, the encouragement that's brought us to this place is we have heard something. We may not have seen, but we've heard enough to know that we could be a part of praying so that ultimately nations could see. And, and that we need to hear so that many more could see. Because um, Isaiah 62, 6 says, I posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will be, they will never be silent day or night. That's a call for the people living in this hour. You who call on the Lord. If, you, if you're calling on the Lord, uh, I mean, we got to connect with, with the instructions given by a holy God. We need to be about our Father's business uh, and, and on our own, and, and our own righteousness. We've got to be about his righteousness, and, and, and his righteousness has everything to do with Jerusalem having uh, shining out with righteousness just like the dawn and nations seeing this. It ain't happening, okay? Not, not yet. And we're not supposed to give God any rest day or night, until he in fact establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise on all the earth. Hey, we're not seeing her righteousness. We're not seeing her salvation. We're not seeing her glory. Uh, and she ain't, she's not a praise on all the earth right now. Um, and listen, I know we can get all upset at, uh, at Muslims and people in Gaza and everything, but you know what? The fact that as Christians, we represent the nations, you know, they're just as much our issue, too. Um, and, and this is why the, the battle is the Lord's. Uh, the victory is the Lord's. Uh, and an altar in which he's asked us to come to and pray as watchmen is his. And, and we need to be about this business. Um, it's absolutely critical for us that are calling ourselves Christians is what are we doing about Jerusalem? You know, what's our position with Jerusalem? Uh, and, and, and I think we need to talk about that, especially as we are, are getting close to the fact of what's called Pentecost and Shavuot, where we're crying out for more of his spirit. Boy, do we ever have to. We need more of him and less of us. Uh, that, that is no doubt. Um, when you've got the Hamas terror chief, Ismail Hanayan, saying in a speech this past Tuesday, we've achieved victory 
in the battle for Jerusalem, the defense of Jerusalem. He later added, Jerusalem is the axis of conflict. I mean, this rhetoric goes out. And meanwhile, the international media is picking up and all sorts of planned events where they get these Palestinian flags into nations and, you know, and stirring up uh, the peoples that who could care less about seeing, having eyes to see and ears to hear, you know. And, you know, here they are in outside the, uh, uh, the Israeli consulate in Turkey, in Istanbul, okay, um, you know, defying curfews to be able to say, go, Palestine, go, go, Palestine, go, shoot those missiles, put them into the civilian neighborhoods. Hey, if you're an Israeli Arab, you know, it, rise up and fight against your neighbor. I, I mean, we've got, I mean, this is the thing that's really impacting what's happening in Israel right now is this could boil over to be a civil war where it's not just bordering countries, but it's right within. Um, there needs to be a people who will stand in the gap. There needs to be a people who will pray. There needs to be a people who will support the work of Alia financially and doing what they can do. Uh, and, and, and really, it's a handful on the planet, you know, in comparison to how many people call themselves followers of Jesus. Um, and, and, and this needs to change. You know, even the rabbis are getting into it, you know, and, and they're warning Muslim leaders, beware of the great fire of God. You know, this is one of the chief rabbis, uh, you know, of the Sephardic Jews in Israel. And, 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 and he's basically saying to the people that are shooting missiles and are, are having anything to do with conspiring against Jerusalem. He wants them to know that the scriptures are clear that anybody who comes against Jerusalem is going to injure themselves. You know, that's what the prophet says. And we've got to know these prophetic words because this is truth. And, and you know, um, in, 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 in Ephesians 6, it says that we need to take our stand against the evil schemes of the principalities and authorities and the rulers and wickedness in high places. Uh, we need to take our stand. And, and one of the first things he says to, to ensure that you are postured heart-wise is that the belt of truth is girding your loins. The breastplate of righteousness is in place. You know, your feet are shot in the right. You know, that, that there is a preparation for praying. And that's Ephesians 6. People don't always know that putting on the full armor of God is a preparation in how to pray. Read it carefully. He says, now, once you've done all this, now pray for all the saints. Okay. You know, pray for me also that every time I open my mouth and give utterance, I might proclaim the mystery of the gospel. I, I mean, the, these are key things, but the, the reality is Christianity has not come to its fullness. If it had come to its fullness, it would be helping Israel come into its fullness, which means Jerusalem coming to its fullness so that it would ultimately be a praise in all the earth and others in the nations could see something happening there. It, we've got to point the fingers at ourselves, church, saints, body of Christ, that we have we have to come into fullness and we're not there and if some of us are here it's not about complaining about the church it's about just acknowledging the truth gird yourself for truth and the truth is fact number 1 the body of christ has not yet reunited with jerusalem we have not connected with Israel. We, we are the, yes, there's a part of us, but we're not quite there. You know, again, give you just some simple facts, Jack, so to speak. Galatians, you know, Paul is really concerned about what was happening there. It's like, 
they were taking the instruction of God, the Torah, the law, and they were, you know, they were putting so much of a focus on it that they were losing sight of the covenants that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and he says, by the way, this doesn't take over the covenants, you know, and, you know, be careful, you know, it, it, it's important, but make sure you don't forget the covenants. Don't forget what Abraham did. Don't forget the promises that God made to Abraham. Uh, you know, in Galatians chapter 3, 14, he says, he redeemed us, speaking about Jesus, in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to Gentiles, the nations, <laughs> through Christ Jesus. You know, it, a part of this big plan is the nations would understand that they've been given a very large part in this plan of God, this plan of, uh, of redemption, that Jesus would die, he would be buried, he would be resurrected, he would ascend to be on the right hand of God. He would send forth his Holy Spirit, not just to give us goosebumps. <laughs> the Holy Spirit would fill us. So that we would allow the Spirit of God within us to function through us. And so this aspect of denying ourselves and picking up our cross and following him, you know, into the times that he's allowed and privileged us to be alive. And we happen to be alive where, and the prophet said it would happen, that nations would come against Jerusalem. And they would injure themselves doing so. And, 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 and again... These words are there that we can understand so that we can posture ourselves in the hour that we're coming in. Uh, he, he went on to say in Galatians, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized in Christ, verse 26, have clothed yourselves with Christ. And I'm speaking to Christians right now. I'm speaking to you who have been clothed with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. This is good news, that the gospel is for all of us, that this, this truth about Christ is, is, is for all of us. But somehow, some people have taken the teachings of Paul, and, you know, rightly so. Even Peter warned us. He says, sometimes Paul's teachings are a little bit hard to understand. Um, but the, the reality is his teachings are still there. And, and yes, uh, they're still male and females, and they're still Jew and Gentile, okay? Uh, the good news is, Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave or free, we can all believe in Jesus Christ. This is good news. But God still has a distinct order for the male and the female. I still can't have a baby yet, okay? Only my wife is given that remarkable call and privilege, okay? And, and, and these are, are things that we, 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 ha we can't, Lose sight of order. God is a God of order. He still has a prescribed order, prescribed plans that he gives distinct responsibility, call and purpose that's without repentance to Jew or Gentile, male or female. And, and as a Gentile, as those of us here who are Christians from the nations, we have a role in this hour. And, 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 I, and I can't say enough that we, we need to find it. And here as we're counting the Omer, as we are counting each day, looking forward to where God is taking us. And, and I can't say that, 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 that this is so, so, you know, important that we realize that between Pesach and Shavuot, Passover and Pentecost, as, as we continue to count these days, and, 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 and anybody know which day we're in today? Come on. Somebody tell me. Praise the Lord. Okay. We are actually in the... Day 46. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Danielle. Top of the class. God bless you. And, and, and that means we are only a few days away from the end of seven weeks, which takes us into Pentecost, where there... The, there should be, uh, you know, somewhat of an anticipation. And, 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 and remember, and we talked about this already, is, is, is that there's two harvests, the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. 
and 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 we're moving towards this this harvest and and, and it's taking us you know to this time frame which takes us ultimately from the resurrection of Jesus to the outpouring of his spirit on what city Jerusalem and 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 again I'm I'm always encouraging the saints is that teach us to number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom when we get on the Lord's calendar and we begin to do things not because they're Jewish feasts but we do things from a place of hey I want to learn how to number my days so that I might not only understand what has happened, I could also see a little bit more into what could happen or what will happen potentially even in my day and be a part of doing what I'm supposed to be doing today. Um, and, and, and we are in this season and we are looking towards and longing and we need an outpouring of God's spirit. Again on Jerusalem, again on Israel, certainly on the nations, so that the nations could actually fulfill uh, the, the purpose to which they've been called to. You know, let, let me go back to the book of Galatians, because again, if, if we try and find out, you know, how does the church veer off course? How do we stray? How do we not see the purposes that God has for Jerusalem and, and, and the purposes God has for the nations. What are some of the things that have thrown us off? Well, one of the things is, is we haven't understood that God has a distinction for, you know, Jew and Gentile. And, 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 and we've got to be able to find out what that distinction is. Uh, well, you know, what does it mean to be a man, a son of God, a husband, a father, a grandfather? I mean, these are things I have. What's it mean to be a Gentile? And, you know, that hit me just over 30 years ago. Like, wow, I'm a Gentile? Like, and there's a purpose for a Gentile? Some of you know Romans 11, 11 just changed my life. Because of their transgressions, speaking about Israel, salvation has come to the, the Gentiles to make them jealous, to make them envious, to make them zealous. Zealous. You know, that like that all of a sudden I realized as we went into Romans 11, 12, that there's a fullness that needs to come to Israel. And God has chosen a people called Gentiles, people from the nations. And, and the only people from the nations that I can figure out could be are the people that have had their eyes opened that the nations could see. And, and if, if, if by the spirit of God that's happened to us, you know, we have a greater responsibility than the ones who can't see, you know, to help the ones who can't see. I mean, if one is blind and one isn't, who's who's responsible from getting from point A to point B? The people that can see. And so the reality is this is part of the responsibility. And I understand this as as the oldest in a, in a family growing up. You know, I, I had more responsibilities than my little sister had. And. It, it wasn't because of anything else is I was the oldest and it was just like <clears throat> responsibility falls on the oldest. Okay. And so it, I could argue it. I could have bucked the system in our family and said, Hey, listen, let me be the youngest. And I want my little sister to be the oldest and she can have all this other responsibility, but that wasn't the call of God in our family. So, so these are things that, that we need to, you know, that we need to come to uh, just, simply accepting you know that god has uh remarkable plans that he's called us to and and, and we've just got to accept the plans as they are and, and enter into their their fullness uh but again how do we get thrown off here i think one is we haven't understood who we are in christ that for me that's clear uh secondly we haven't understood some of the things that the Apostle Paul, who is the Apostle to the Gentiles. And these epistles that he wrote were given to us. And, and a lot of what he, he says, he says very clearly, you know, um, and, he, and he says it over and over again. I love what he says in Romans 15. He says, for everything that was written in the past, that's the law and the prophets, he says, was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. So he kept wanting to point us back to the Torah. He wanted to keep pointing us back to understand the scripture. Jesus did the same thing, you know, on the road to Emmaus. 
uh, that happened during the counting of the Omer time, uh, uh, right at the beginning, he says to those fellows, hey, how foolish you are not to believe everything that was written about me in the Law and the Prophets. And one of the last things he did before he ascended is he broke bread so that they could see and that they might have understanding in their heart and mind and that they would be able to understand the scriptures. That was clear that the Spirit of God needed to come to give us a greater revelation and understanding of what has been written so as to be able to find our instructions so as to be a part of what God's asking us to do. You know, the Apostle Paul, in writing to the church at the to the Galatian church, he tells a little bit of a story. And again, this is a story that really takes us off Jerusalem. Uh, and, and again, we got to understand this and make it clear, especially some of you who have this revelation, but sometimes we don't always know how to communicate it. And I'm hoping some of what I'm sharing today might help you. Um, in verse 21 of Galatians 4, it says, Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware what the law says? For it's written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born in an ordinary way. But his son by the free woman was born as a result of the promise. These things might be taken figuratively. For the women represent two covenants. Now, he says right here, they could be taken figuratively. So he, he's defined that this, I'm about to tell you something, and I'm using this as an illustration that is giving to you something in a, you know, a figurative sense. Uh, and, and, and he says, these two women, okay, represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears... Children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Now, Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in, in Arabia and corresponds to the, get this, the present city of Jerusalem. Ding, 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 ding. All of a sudden, uh, Jerusalem, which between the Old Testament or the Hebrew writings and what we call the New Testament, is probably mentioned over 800 times. This one verse <laughs> that mentions Jerusalem is where theology, theology so often has grown to replace earthly Jerusalem for heavenly Jerusalem. Now, isn't that sad? You know, and it's so important that we take one scripture and, 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 and we have an anticipation that it should collaborate with so many other scriptures. And when it's not collaborating, then it's not because the Bible's bad, it's because we just don't understand it. And until and we can pray and ask God to give us greater understanding. And, and that would be a case in point right here. Because so many people have taken this aspect of, oh, Hagar stands for Mount Sinai and Arabia, corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem. Hmm, that's the present city today. And now, we got to remember that Paul was talking here. It was about around 57 AD and around that time, maybe a little bit earlier, you know, there's difference in opinion, but the bottom line, it was before Jerusalem was destroyed, before it would be made desolate. That's all, that hadn't happened yet. That was prophecy yet to happen. Even Jesus said, you know, he says, no, one stone would, 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 would be upon another. And, and, and this is really key stuff because Jesus wanted uh, you know, he, he wept over the city because he knew that God had a plan for the city, but he needed to say that, hey, guys, one day, not one stone will be on top of another. And today, you can go into that city and go to its cardinal. It's being dug up, and you can see those stones that were thrown from the Temple Mount, you know, uh, when the Romans came and burnt the city and began its, its prophecy in which it would be desolate for centuries. The city and the land. But, but, and today, although it was liberated in 1967, they still can't, you know, regularly get to the top of the temple. They still have to come to a retaining wall and use this as one of their more religious sites on the planet. Really, it's a shame. You know, it goes on to say in verse 26, but the Jerusalem that is above is free. And she is our mother. You know, that's your mother, 
don't get mixed up. You know, again, but then he goes to an interesting passage of scripture. And again, when we read um, uh, the New Testament, and it starts quoting what we call Old Testament or the Hebrew writings, read it in its context so that you can better understand this. Because some people, if they only have New Testaments and they don't even have an Old Testament, because for many, that's all that was given to them. Okay, and, and for some, we've been told that you don't need an Old Testament. You don't need the Hebrew writings. You don't need the law and prophets anymore. Even though Jesus said how foolish you are not to see all that's been written in me. Even though Paul keeps bringing us back to it and says that was all given to you. It's almost like, no, no. I mean, Paul said these things after the resurrection, after the ascension of Jesus. So when it says, oh, gl be glad, O barren woman who bears no children. Break forth and cry aloud. You have no labor pains, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now, keep your finger in Galatians chapter 4, but go back to Isaiah 54, because what's he talking about here? You know, how's he referring this, or should I just write off Jerusalem as it would seem he's doing, even though he said he's speaking figuratively? You know, um, so we would go to Isaiah 54, and uh, and again, it starts very, you know, just, just as, as I said, it started, uh, single barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy. You, I mean, it sounds like something pretty special is going to happen here. Uh, 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 you were never in labor because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who is a husband, says the Lord. I'll tell you, when you get your good news from the word of God, I'll tell you, then you are girding yourself with truth, okay? But if, if we are counting on our news on Israel from the internet or whatever newsreel we like to watch or read each day, um, we're in trouble. It'll, it will go astray. We have to get the word on Jerusalem, on Israel, on Jesus, on uh, what we'd be clothed in, Christ Jesus, uh, from the Word of God. This is our source. And if you've got the Holy Spirit, praise the Lord, then, then the good news is these words mean more to us with the Holy Spirit than if you don't have the Holy Spirit. And that's, that's a huge message on its own. Another day, another time. Back to Isaiah 54. Let's read about the good news, okay? Enlarge your place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Oh, I love this part. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cord. Strengthen your strength. It sounds like the new Jerusalem could be happening. In fact, I'm wondering even right now, you know, in light of what's happening, you know, is it possible that this stress labor that's happening right now is leading to something bigger, maybe the new Jerusalem that's above? Is it leading to Jesus coming and ruling and reigning in this Jerusalem, this present day of Jerusalem? Uh, not a present day, because it needs to be, remember, it needs to be, what? Blazing like a torch, not like the one I showed you a little bit earlier. <laughs> it, 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 it's righteousness needs to shine out like the dawn, remember? <laughs> and remember the watchman on the wall, Jerusalem, they know this, so they're praying towards this, that this city would be would have its transformation and and nations would actually see it and, and we have that role to bring it to that point but we can stop if we read galatians and connect with replacement theology and just go huh everything's heavenly now <laughs> every, every you know i don't have to worry about that jesus did his job there it's done jesus is coming back to that city he's putting his feet on the same mountain that he left from and that mountain that Mount of Olives is going to go from the west to the east. I'll tell you, we've got some big days ahead for Jerusalem. But until those days come, there needs to be a, a watchman on the walls of Jerusalem that are praying day and night, giving him no rest, taking no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise in all the earth. And I'm talking to some of them right now, and I'm really trying to rally the troops. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go on. It's, it's going to enlarge. It's going to get bigger. And for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations. Wow. And settle in their desolate cities. Wow. Uh, it goes on to say, are you, are you getting excited yet? Do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Shame. You will not suffer shame. Uh, do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. I'll tell you, 
Jerusalem is being humiliated right now. It says, you will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Jerusalem was rejected. Yes. For, for your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. <laughs> that makes it a different situation. When the maker is your husband, uh -huh. doesn't matter what happened. Doesn't matter how bad it was. Uh, doesn't matter how good it was. When your maker is your husband, <laughs> you are in the right family. It goes on to say, the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is Redeemer. Wow. There's a redemption coming to Jerusalem. Uh, he is called the God of all the earth. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted, distressed in spirit. A wife who married young only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you. But with deep compassion, I'll bring you back. With deep compassion, with deep mercy, he's going to bring you back. How does he do that? Church, saints, he does that because he chose us to be those conduits in which his mercy would flow through. We read it in Romans 11. We would be those conduits that would bring comfort. Read it in Isaiah 40. We would be those conduits that would bless Israel. Read it in Genesis chapter 12. It's written all through the word of God. We are these conduits. And that can only happen if we've received the promise that comes through Jesus Christ. This is good news. It goes on to say, the, 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 for a brief moment I abandoned you, but with deep compassion I will bring you back. In a surge of anger I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have compassion on you. Says, you, you got to understand, when you see that God says I'm going to have compassion on you, it's not like he jumps, he comes down and he does it all. And then all we have to do is go, go, God, go, go, God, go. No, no, he comes down into us. And he fills us, not just so that we would do, go, God, go. We'd also go, God, go. Oh. You want to use me? You want to be, you want me, you want me to be a righteous tool in the hand of a living God? You, 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 then that would make some of other Paul's words, right? That you want to flow through me? That you want me to manifest your wisdom? You, you want to use this body? And not only this body, you want to use your whole body, a global body of nations? Do we identify with the high calling and the purpose God has given us? It, it, he goes on to say, and I mean, this is quite a comparison. To me, this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So now I have sworn not to be angry with you, Never to rebuke you again. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed. <laughs> it doesn't matter what's happening. Okay. Yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. God's love is everlasting. <sighs> oh, you want to be on this team. Nor my covenant of peace be removed. Says the Lord who has compassion on you. O oh, afflicted city, lashed by storms and not comforted, I will build you with stones of turquoise, your foundations with sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of sparkling juice, and all your walls of precious stones. I can't wait to call that day. I, you know, maybe it's not my day, maybe it's my kids, I don't know. But the bottom line is to be able to say, we're getting ready for the sapphires and the rubies because. We are establishing Jerusalem just as he said, because we've got the instructions here. Wow. We are, it says, all your sons will be taught by the Lord, and great will be your children's peace. In righteousness, you will be established. He goes on to say, tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. What removes this terror? What removes this tyranny? If anyone does attack you, will not be my doing. Whoever attacks you will surrender to you. See, it is I who created the blood. You don't. He says, no weapon formed against you will prevail. How does this happen? Because it doesn't look like it's happening right now. I'll tell you why it's not happening right now. It's because the church hasn't come into its fullness. The nations haven't come into their fullness. Because we are the vessels that God in loving patience is waiting for us. He believes in us more than we believe in him. 
And he's saying, would you not beckon to my call? He says in Isaiah 49, verse 22, the Lord beckons to the Gentiles. He lifts up his banner to the peoples. They will bring my sons in their arms and my daughters on my shoulders. Go there. Quickly, quickly. Isaiah 49. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this part of Isaiah 49, and I want you to get it. Because if you can get this, if the eyes of your understanding can be open to this, I'll tell you, you will weep for Jerusalem like you've never wept before. If, you, if the eyes of your understanding will get this, you will not be go astray to what any of the local media, international media, is saying about Jerusalem right now. You, you will connect with what the good news says, and this is where your anchor will be. He goes on to say, Isaiah 49. Actually, start at verse 13. God speaks to the heavens. Shout for joy, O heavens. Rejoice, O earth. That's us. A burst into song, O mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. How does God do it? He comforts his people with people that have eyes to see and ears to hear. When you read Isaiah 40, comfort, yes, comfort my people. He's calling for a people who can hear. And a people that have courage to do. A fearless people. It says here, but Zion said, the Lord has forgotten me. Because Zion sort of catches in on this conversation. Zion's eavesdropping. Jerusalem is eavesdropping and going, <coughs> having its pity party. The Lord has forgotten me. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the sound from heaven comes out again. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? And have no compassion on the child she's born. <gasps> Though she may forget you, I will not forget you. The, uh, the sound of heaven is speaking down to Jerusalem. Uh, see, I've engraved you on the palms of my hand. Do you see the shin? There it is. Uh, your walls are ever before me. And then he says a very definite point hear it clearly because this is truth and i want you to gird your loins with it it says your sons hasten back and those who laid you waste depart from you did you hear it your sons hasten back and those who laid you waste depart from you We see a people who have compassion on Zion. That's where it begins. And then they go, well, how can I, how can I bring Jerusalem? How can I bring Zion to a place of, of peace? How can I bring it, uh, its comfort? How can I put a smile on Jerusalem's face? I'll have compassion on her children. I'll have compassion on her sons. Uh, uh, it, and then I read in the Apostle Paul, Romans 11, he says, the mercy I give you is to give back to my children of disobedience. The ones who've been disobedient once before, God forgave them. It was done. And he raises up another people, people who once weren't his people, but now are his people. And they will take the mercy God has given us. We got adopted in the family and we gave us some purpose. And we give it to them. And, and, and it says, your sons hasten back. Well, we already know, because I already read ahead to verse 22. The, the, the sovereign Lord, not just the Lord, the sovereign Lord beckons to the nations, to the Gentiles. And they bring the sons home. That's how they get home. <laughs> so, so, by the way, uh, 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 missiles firing, plagues, doesn't stop these people from helping to bring his people home. No, no, no. Because the answer to the problem of why you have people that are devouring Israel is because there's not enough people back in the land. This should be a wake-up call to the nations. It said, your sons hasten back and those who laid you waste depart from you. So you bring people home. This is how, this is the weapons of our warfare. Our, our warfare isn't missiles, those of us who've been called and clothed in Christ. No, our weapons are prayer and action, a faithful action, actions that are according to that which has been written. Because we proclaim Jesus Christ as Paul asked us to, according to the revelation of the mystery, 
hidden for ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings. Romans 16, 25 to 27. It goes on to say, by his eternal command, pretty big, so that nations would believe. We already do that, but we would obey the only wise God. See, that's the difference. It is There's more in the nations that believe than they really do obey. But as we come into fullness, fullness brings us to obedience so that ultimately we would understand that we got to go out there and uh, be uh, about the father's business. We've heard the call of the nations to get her home. <laughs> it goes on to say, uh, lift up your eyes and look around. Oh, there's another opening up the eyes of our understanding. All your sons gather and come to you. Uh, by the way, this is speaking again to Zion. Uh, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. <laughs> Zion, a bride, is going to put on the sons that are gathering back like ornaments. This is where I love the word Jew. I see Jew in jewelry. You know, as ornaments. There's a wedding going to be taking place. Oh, I'm getting excited. It goes on. Let me tell you your history. Though you were ruined and made desolate, it happened after 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, and your land laid waste. Now you'll be too small for your people. Oh, back to Isaiah 54. Remember the expansion? Yeah. Uh, and, and all those who devoured you will be far away. How do they go away? Do they go away because missiles are shot at them or we rely on Israel? And we go, go, Israel, go. Use the Iron Dome. Use the Iron Dome. No! Uh, we are a different people. Uh, this is not our warfare as Christians, as Christian Zionists, biblical Zionists. We've been called to bring the Jewish people home. We've been called to restore the kingdom of God. This is our call and this is our purpose. Uh, th those of us who are alive in this hour, uh, uh, when we go back to the words, 10 days on the 40th day of counting the Omer 2000 years ago, and, and they says, is it now time to restore the kingdom of God? Jesus said, ah, 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 ah. that's not for you guys. He says, you tarry here another 10 days. And the gift that was promised you will come, the Holy Spirit. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other parts of the nation's world. Why? So that ultimately we would get it because we are part of the hour to restore the kingdom to Israel. Not just restore the kingdom. It's very clear in Acts chapter 1. Restore the kingdom to Israel. We are living for that hour. We are moving towards that hour. It, it goes on to say that this place is too small for us. Give us more space to live in. But God says, that's what you might be saying today. But sooner or later, you're going to say this. Then you will say in your heart, who bore me these? Who, who bore me who? Uh, these sons that have come back like ornaments to be put on a bride. Uh, while the enemy was leaving, remember? Alia? <laughs> They come, enemy leaves. Uh, it says it right here in Isaiah 49. It goes on to say, then you will say, you are who bore me these. I was bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. Who brought these up? I was left all alone. But, but these, where have they come from? Where have these sons come from? These people that have had compassion and mercy given to them. Where have they come from? Zion's asking the big question. And what's the answer? Isaiah 49 verse 22. The sovereign, underline that word sovereign. It's not just the Lord, it's the sovereign Lord. It's the big guy. He, the sovereign Lord says, see, I will beckon to the Gentiles. Remember, because we received an understanding of the covenant promise that was made to Abraham and that through his seed, through Jesus Christ, this has, has been growing in us and we are coming to the fullness of grace. So as to be able to be fully used by him in this hour. See, I'll beckon to the Gentiles. I'll lift up my banner to the people. They will bring their sons in their arms and carry your daughters and shoulders. That's our call. To return them home. It's our turn. As Tim says. Kings will be your foster fathers. And their queens your nursing mothers. Ho, ho. This isn't just us. I'll tell you. Our kings and queens, you know, the ones that are saying all the bad things about Israel right now. And don't really get the picture because they just don't see yet. But they will ultimately be bowing down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. 
a little bit greater than washing their feet. Wow. Then you will know, well, they are washing their feet, but with their tongues. Wow. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Wow. A bigger revelation comes forth when the nations actually do their job. Hmm. That tells me that instead of handing out the four spiritual laws and trying to reason with Jews why they should know Jesus. And, you know, that's not our, for me, I see a bigger role and responsibility as being obedient to what God's asked us to do. And that will bring a revelation and manifest his wisdom to the heavenlies, Paul says in Ephesians 3.10. It goes on to say, can plunder be taken from warriors? Verse 24, or captives rescued from the fierce? But this is what the Lord says. Yes. Captives will be taken from the mind. You see, we're watching this conversation between Zion, Jerusalem, and God. And, and in the midst of it, he's talking about us. <laughs> Just in case you didn't get it. It goes on to say, yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved from the fierce. He says, I will contend with those who contend with you and your children. I will say. Those who bless thee will be blessed. Those who curse thee will be cursed. Again, I'm not saying we do all the work. But as we cooperate with God, things will just happen because it will just happen. And, and we'll go, how did that happen? It's because the, the environment has changed when the nations fulfill their purpose before the heavens and before a holy God. It says here, 26, I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. you got to know which side of the team you want to be on. They will be drunk in their own blood as with wine. I mean, that's a sad part of God's judgment. But in his heart and mind, it's glorious. And, and then read what happens next. Then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. When we... Have mercy. And we give it back to the Jewish people. To the extent that we're even helping them home. Sheltering them and giving them comfort when they're home. That's what the ark is doing today. When we're doing this, the enemy leaves. God gets glory. And revelation starts being poured out for other people to know him as God. To the extent that the outpouring is so great, all mankind will know it. This is redemption. And, and that's why when you go to Galatians, and we will end here, and, and, and we go back to this, this figuratively speaking, as Paul wanted us to know, please don't make your doctrine on Jerusalem by Galatians 3 and 4. Uh, let it be a part of helping you to get an understanding about Jerusalem. But when it speaks, and he says, I'm speaking figuratively, understand it as a figurative example that he's making. Uh, uh, and, and don't take the ones that are supposed to happen literally and throw them out because of some figurative language that Paul felt he needed to make, to make another point that has to do with having the faith of Abraham. And, 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 and stick with that. Again, he goes on to say in uh, chapter 4, after he brought us back to Isaiah 54, okay? He says, now you brothers like Isaac are children of promise. Do you, do you get it, he says? At this time, the son born in the ordinary way persecuted the son born by the power of the spirit. You are the children born of the promise, born by the power of the Spirit. So we see differently. We see the words that were once hidden from others. It goes on to say, but what does the scripture uh, say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the woman's son. And all of a sudden, people say, get rid of Jerusalem. That's what they've done for centuries. Therefore, brothers, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman i'll tell you when we connect with being a child of the spirit we then have as he continues to say in chapter five we have the freedom that's 
in Christ. And it gives us the empowerment to stand form, firm and not let ourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And, and this is where he's trying to take us. He's trying to bring us into the freedom that's ours with the promise that was given uh, and covenanted with Abraham. But it, you know, we've got to be careful that we don't lose sight of who we are in Christ. Uh, and that we as the nations have been given a distinct role that's part of this redemptive plan of the Christ that lives in us being clothed in Christ and coming to his fullness that we can bring another nation into its fullness and and in doing so it will it will provide an outpouring of God's spirit in a great way can we move in this direction especially as we're moving towards Shavuot here in just a few more days next uh, Monday uh, it, it's about the spirit. And I believe, and I'm believing with all of us today for a greater outpouring in the midst of some hardship that's taking place in Israel right now, that there will be those in the nations that will help bring Jewish people home. That this won't be a time to retreat, but you're going to call Peg and you'll say, Peg, do you got some Jews that need, to, need some help home? And she's got all sorts of files right now that have Jews wanting to get home and, and and we've got to be there ready for them and help them and to be a blessing in their return and and, and to be able to spend time praying for them relate because I mean they get scared when all this stuff so some of them are probably going mm, maybe I shouldn't make Ali now we need to pray for those people so we've got to be able to see in the spirit in light of what's happening, so we can hear in the Spirit and respond in the Spirit because we have freedom in Christ to do this. Oh, can somebody say, Baruch Hashem, blessed be his name. Let him have all glory. Father, I want to thank you that returning Jewish people home is about removing the enemy from the land of Israel. Yeah, I mean, returning the Jewish people home has so many other uh, factors, but one of those factors is, is removing the enemy from the land. It, it, it's about, it, it's part of giving compassion to your people. It's part of taking the mercy you've given us and giving it back to them. It's part of restoring the kingdom to Israel. It's part of proclaiming Jesus Christ according to a revelation of mystery, hidden for ages past, but now found in the prophetic writings. Oh God. Would you help us not to lose sight, but to stay focused? Oh, God, would you help us to, to pray and intercede and be those watchmen on the walls for Jerusalem day in and day out? Oh, God, we do need your help in all this. And so we're asking, oh, God, would you, would you help us? Would you, would, would, would you help us so that we will not lose sight of what you've called us to do in this hour? We are crying out for you so that like Cornelius, oh, God, he got it. He knew. He gave alms to the poor. Oh, God. And, and you would choose him to be one of the first Gentiles to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And from that port in Caesarea, this gospel would go out into the nations. And God, would you bring us to the place of what Cornelius knew, just even in that first century, that our alms to the poor in, 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 in Jerusalem, our, our, our participation in, 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 in praying and interceding for the return and the restoration of your people, it would go up as a memorial before you as well. And that we can believe for more of an outpouring spirit, not just on us who are standing in the gap doing it, but for all our household, just like Cornelius. Oh God, for we stand in the gap for not just ourselves individually. We stand in the gap for our families. We stand in the gap for our nation. Oh God, we stand in the gap for Christ Jesus. God, we want you to have all the glory, all the power, all the honor. Lord, that it would not be too long where Jerusalem would be a house of prayer for all nations. We are longing for its righteousness to shine out like a blazing torch, for its glory to be seen before all mankind. God, I thank you for the part you've given us in the church, in the nations, for the glory and the honor of your great name. Amen. Amen.